This lesson is about using test in scripts. Scripts are about manipulating data, and data is usually stored in files, so most scripts deal with manipulating files. One of the fundamental operations in dealing with files is checking a file to find out what type it is and what its permissions are. The most fundamental action of test is to determine whether a file exists, and that can be done with this script. This is an example of using test to determine whether a file exists. Here the test command is used as part of an if statement. The code following then will be executed if the if statement results in true. The else portion will be executed where the if statement results in false. If a file doesn't exist, it says so. And if a file exists, it says so. Okay, that's a demonstration of how it works, but it usually is written a bit differently. Here's another version of the script that does exactly the same thing. Now this is the same script, but it uses a slightly different syntax. The test command is replaced by square brackets, just as we did in the last lesson. Nothing new there. However, the other difference is something that may be new to you. The then keyword is put on the same line as the if keyword, but a semicolon was put in front of it. You see, you can put multiple shell commands on the same line as long as you separate them with semicolons. Now take a good look at this form because it's the one that you'll see most often in system shell scripts and it's the form that I'm going to be using from now on. Whether it's the best form is a matter of possible argument, but it's the one that you will see almost universally in system files. You can determine a lot more about a file than whether it just exists. For example, this script will tell you whether it's a directory and what sort of access it allows. For example, the safety directory that was created in an earlier exercise looks like this. Oh, by the way, the D option on LS tells it to report on the directory name itself instead of the contents of the directory. Anyway, the new script reports it this way. There are lots of things you can test, and there are lots of other things that you can find out about files. No sane person can remember all of this, so that's why there's a man page that lists all of it. You can test for a file not only existing, but whether it's a block or a character device or anything else, a regular file, a directory, just about anything you can think of. And tests can be used for other things. This example shows how it can be used to compare two numbers. All numeric comparisons are made with two letter operators, GT for greater than, LT for less than, LE for less than or equal to, NE for not equals, and so on. They're all on the man page. And this example shows all four of the if keywords, if, else, elif, and fi, the keyword that ends the if block. You often see long strings of elif keywords when checking for several possible situations. All this script does is compare two numbers. All right, to wrap this lesson up, let's write a script that compares the counts of the numbers of characters in a couple of files and determine which one contains the most. It's easier to do than you might think, but we have to combine some of the stuff in this lesson with some stuff from the previous lessons. Before I get to the script itself, let me show you how we can count the characters. The word count command will give us a count of the lines, words, and characters, like this. But all we want is the number of characters, and that can be done by using the M option this way. Now we have the count that we need, but the darn thing also prints the name of the file. Normally that would be quite useful, but in this case we want just the number. It's possible to edit the text that's output from the command, but it's easier just to never tell it the name in the first place. 
If the text is just piped into the command, all it knows is the text, so that's all it can report. Good. Now the output is just the number, and we can certainly use that in the script. Here's the script. Remember the back ticks and how they work? The command inside the back tick marks is executed and the result of the execution is stored in the variable. In this case, the count of the number of characters of the first file named on the command line is stored in the variable CCA, and the count of the second file is stored in CCB. The count numbers are compared in the if statement and the appropriate line is printed. Running this script using a couple of scripts from earlier in the lesson works like this. All right, this should give you a fundamental notion of how shell scripts are constructed and how they work. There are a lot more tricks like multi-way branching and exit codes, and I'll be showing you some of those, but from here on, it's just a matter of adding on to what you already know.